I am a reference librarian at the Worcester branch of the Wayne County Public Library, and today I'm going to be reviewing some recent books I read with unlikely heroines. So these are women uh, that you as the reader or for the characters within their stories might be tempted to overlook or they themselves might not think of themselves as heroines, um, but you would be missing out if you ignore them. Now, first up, we have The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagoner, which I had to read because it had such an awesome title. It is about Delaria or Deli Wells. Uh, Deli is a con artist, a thief. Uh, she can't afford her rent. She definitely does not see herself as a heroine and assumes that no one around her will either. So she calls herself gutter witch trash, um, not the best self-esteem. And she calls herself that because she grew up poor. She's not formally educated. Um, her mom is battling a drug addiction. However, Delhi has something that not everybody has, and that's magic. So this story takes place in a Victorian-esque steampunk world. And so about 10% of the population has magic, and Delhi's magic is all about fire. She can create fire, she can melt things, she doesn't get burned, and so on. Now, in an attempt to avoid potential jail time, uh, at the beginning of the book, Delhi lies to a magistrate claiming that she could not have done the crime she is accused of, but totally did. Um, because she was working. Now, earlier in the day, she had seen a Help Wanted poster looking for female magical companions for a wealthy woman. And the judge chooses to believe her, but wants to follow up. So now she definitely has to get this job. And so she does decide to go out for the interview. She's going to try, even though she thinks there's no way I'm going to get hired because, you know, I don't have this formal education. Well, luck is on her side. After a string of interviews with these peculiar but well-bred ladies, she's hired. And she gets to meet uh, the other women who have been assigned to keep Mayel, is, uh, who she's going to protect, um, so there, she gets to meet everyone who's going to keep Mayel safe as she prepares for her wedding day. Um, the cast of characters is fabulous. There's an attractive and well-to-do half-troll named Wynne. There is a grandmotherly necromancer who is obsessed with birdwatching named Mrs. Totham. There's a preteen named Ermintrude who can turn into a pig. And then there's Miss Doc, a potion maker. Now, my favorite of this group does not get introduced until a little later in the novel, uh, and that is Buttons. Buttons a dead mouse, um, and he has been reanimated by not Mrs. Totham, but another necromancer with the soul and mind of a long-dead wizard. And <laughs> as you might expect, with anyone who whose mind is now in an animal, much less a dead animal, uh, there's a lot of confusing stares and things to get used to and Buttons attempts to communicate and let's just say um, there are some very humorous uh, scenes involving Buttons and the general public. Now, Deli assumes that protecting Mayel is going to be easy money, but we wouldn't have a book if that's all there was, right? There are assassins after her, after Mael, and one of these assassins has this really twisted magic where she can animate inanimate objects, and she laces them with blood, and then they're real twisty. And so join Delhi, and you can figure out who are these assassins working for, why do they want to hurt Mael, who seems so kind, and will Delhi step up and ultimately save the day? This book was a lot of fun, and it's really everything you would want in an adventure. My second book that I'm going to talk about is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. This is another story where the lead character never saw herself as a heroine. 
And I have to say, I love Lisa Jewell. Her character development is amazing, and this story is no exception. Now, uh, our main character is Laurel Mack. She is in her 40s. Her marriage ended seven years ago. Ten years ago, uh, her daughter Ellie, who was uh, just about to finish high school, disappeared. Now, Laurel does not think that Ellie ran away like the police believe. She was beloved by her parents, her friends and siblings, her teachers, and she and her boyfriend were like the cutest teenage picture-perfect couple. And besides, Laurel thinks, like, who would run away right before final exams when you've been studying for them for months? But one day, Ellie was just gone. Now, Laurel's still trying to get her life together 10 years after Ellie's disappearance, there haven't been any clues about Ellie's, or in Ellie's case for some time, and everyone kind of keeps telling her it's time to move on, however sad that is. But one day, she meets a charming man named Floyd in a cafe, and flirting turns to dating, which turns into a deeper affection. And then, you know, before she knows it, she is meeting Floyd's family, and Floyd's daughter looks like Ellie. So her name is Poppy, and Poppy just takes Laurel's breath away. And I'm not talking like, you know, they both had red hair or something. Like, she has an uncanny resemblance, like a tiny version of her missing daughter. So everything about Ellie's disappearance has now come flooding back. Where did Ellie go? Did she really want to run away from home, or was there something more sinister going on in relation to her disappearance? And who really is Floyd? There is an emotional punch as the tension builds toward the dramatic end of this thriller. I hope you enjoy it and Laurel as much as I did. All right. My final book is Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. This book was so interesting to me. It's complex and nuanced and an all-around great fantasy like nothing I had ever read before. Now, our main character is Jess. She grew up in the United States, but her family has now moved to Malaysia, which is where her parents are from. And Jess is just stressed out, um, and that's for a variety of reasons. She's just finished college. She now has to look for a job in a country where she's never worked and hasn't visited since she was a toddler. Um, her dad just got through a bout with cancer. Uh, she's now in a long distance relationship. And since arriving in Malaysia, she's hearing voices in her head and thinks she might be losing it. Well, it turns out that the voice isn't coming from her head. It is from her mischievous but tough grandma, Ama. And Ama is haunting Jess. So uh, it's, it's pretty humorous right at first, um, as you might expect from anyone who's being haunted by their, their grandma. Um, obviously, Ah Ma is not a malevolent ghost while, like, in a horror movie. She actually just wants Jess's help and body to take on a gangster businessman who plans on tearing down the temple that Ah Ma worked, on, worked at while she was alive. And Ama also has a few personal reasons to take on this businessman, but I don't want to give away any spoilers. Now, the title of the book, Blackwater Sister, comes from the vengeful and mysterious goddess who lives at this temple that is potentially going to be torn down for uh, a new development. And in life, Ama was Blackwater Sister's medium. And now Ama cannot rest until this gangster businessman pays for the disrespect he's done to Blackwater Sister. And Blackwater Sister can't move on either, and she needs Jess's help as well. So I'll admit this book had a bit of a slow start, but once the action started, I could not put it down. Um, it, it, was, it was really interesting. I enjoyed reading it. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful day and have some great reading time. Music